Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Becky and I make videos all about van life, minimalism, slow living and holistic health. Today's video, we are going to be comparing a fully built out garage area versus an open garage area and which one you would prefer for your camper. Whether you've had one before and you want to change it up or whether you're starting out from scratch, this video is going to give you all of the tips and ideas that we've tried and tested between these two vans. And also I'm going to let you into the new layout of Dragonfly, which is our Mercedes Vario, which we are currently converting. If you want to know more about that, then you can head over to Mel's channel, which is my partner's, and I'm going to pop the link up in the corner here. So. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So let's head into the back of my van and I will explain the reason behind my layout. And then we'll head into the back of Mel's van and I will show you the layout that he has decided to have in that van. And so you can get an idea between an open layout and a planned layout. Let's jump into the van. So here we have the layout of my van and I specifically chose this layout for the way that I wanted to use the tailgate that I've got up here. There we go, see? And also where I'm going to be taking this van when we travel together in Europe and the UK. I wanted to be able to have a kitchen outside here from the back. I wanted to be able to grab everything from inside the kitchen and use it outside because as you can see I've got this big drawer that pulls out here and on it is a lid which we can use as a tabletop and kitchen prep area. So I specifically chose this garage area for multiple uses. I wanted the boxes as you can see here that you can easily pull out completely. They're not on runners. You can fill up the boxes and then pop them back in the space. Or if you didn't want to and have it all open instead, you can still have that ability because none of these are fixed. So you can, I don't know, seasonally, if you had something in a box that you didn't need for your summer travels, you could just take that box out, pop it in storage, and then you've still got a space to then use when you're on your travels. Now over in the corner here, I've got a shower area where I'm going to be keeping all of my shower products as well as the actual outdoor shower. I will be fitting a hose holder up on the tailgate. So again, this area can be used as a shower bathroom stroke area. I've got a shower curtain that magnetizes all the way around the tailgate. So that's super easy to convert this area into an outdoor shower have the privacy, have the bathroom access, but then you can tuck it all away into the cupboard and you wouldn't even know that it was there. Let's move on to the large drawer. So this large drawer has a industrial type pull out drawer system, which I bought specifically for this large capacity drawer because I wanted it to hold my massage couch so that I can work from the van. And also when I'm not doing that, Mel wants to be able to put his metal detectors, his diving tank and his wetsuits all in there. So it had to be super durable, take a lot of weight and withstand being constantly used. So again, we wanted to make sure that this area worked with our lifestyle, worked with what we wanted to do within the van, but still look pleasant. When you open the back doors, you can easily have everything separated and organized so you're not scrabbling around in an open area. So let's show you the big drawer. So we've got the two sliders along with the handle at the bottom, which makes it super easy to pull out. I've then asked Mel to make me a really big lid, which is not fixed, but it's just one big piece of ply. which serves as the tabletop, obviously. This is the drawer lid for inside the van, which we won't talk about today, but you can go and check out my other videos and see how that works. So we're just gonna pull that one out as well. And here we have a huge big pullout drawer. So like I said, this is my massage couch at the moment, and I've still got plenty of room at the side for other items 
when we go on our travels and I don't need to be working, then this will obviously be taken out and we'll put the tanks, the scuba gear, the metal detectors, you name it, all of our outdoor sporting gear will be in this big drawer. So let's go and talk about the outdoor kitchen area, which is just on the top of this worktop area in just a second. I just need to put all this back now. I love the fact that this drawer is super sturdy and built for industrial strength because it also means if you really wanted to you could sit on here and enjoy the view from the back of the van it has so many uses I'm just so pleased that I decided to go for this layout I've seen it in so many different other vans but I didn't realize just how much I would love it until we actually fitted it in so with that being said it's actually going to be a new feature in our current van build but we'll talk about that more later on in the video so stay tuned for that now the final point i want to talk about with the tailgate kitchen and the way that i've designed the garage area on this van is this beautiful worktop area so you see we've got the backsplash here it not only stops things from being on the work surface falling back onto the mattress because we've got the bed just right down behind there but it also creates a nice divide between the bedroom and the kitchen so when you're in the bedroom area you can be sat up against this board it gives you a nice place to sit up against you can lean over and put your cup of tea here or something to eat or a snack if you're in the bedroom area then when you're cooking in this area as well, you've got a nice backboard to work against and nothing's going to spill or fall onto the bedroom area. And it also visually gives the appearance of a proper outdoor kitchen rather than it just sort of ending and going nowhere. Now with the electrical points on the top here, both left and right, it means I can pop my induction hob here, I can put my air fryer and I can cook just standing here on the top which is more than enough space if I didn't want to use the pull-out drawer as a table. So I wanted, again, multiple purpose and multiple use ways for this whole area. I may well put kitchen stuff in some of these pots as we go on, but for now, I've got everything stored in my kitchen area at the front of the van in those three drawers, and I haven't needed to extend into this area yet. But we'll see how we go once we've actually been traveling in this and use this as the outdoor kitchen. Like anything, it always moves and it's got that adaptability. I just finished off this ply, it's just natural, normal ply, and I've just oiled it up to protect it and water seal it. But other than that, I haven't done anything with it. And I just love how it protects everything. It, it marks out a specific kitchen area and the third thing that I love about this is because it's stepped back and you're under the tailgate here. My number one thing when living in a camper van that I really do not like is when the bed finishes flush at the end of the camper. Your bedding gets wet, you get wet, you get a gale force wind if it's really cold and wet. And what this does is it separates the bedroom area from the outside area just by pushing it that tiny bit back. I mean, it's no more than 30 centimeters, but as you can see, just by having the bedroom area stepped back that much more, it allows your bedding to stay dry. It allows you to sit in the bedroom area comfortably. You can sit up in the bedroom area and not have to worry about your back doors opening suddenly and it just makes it for a much nicer environment. So people can be out here, people can be in there and you're not interfering with each other. You can quite comfortably do your separate things and cohesively live together. For instance, if Mel was out here and he wanted to get something out of the big drawer, he can do. And I can sit up with my back against this board, continuing to read my book and drink my drink, which is on the top here. And it's not having to affect what he's up to and vice versa. So have a think, what is it in your type of living in your van do you want to include? Are there elements or design flaws that will somehow 
affect one another when you're living and doing your day-to-day -day stuff in the van. The final thing I wanted to quickly touch on also was lighting. Now, because we've got the tailgate up there, we were able to install these little spotlights as well. So it means that when I'm in the kitchen, maybe and it's dark in an afternoon or an evening, I can have the lights pointed down here into the kitchen area and then I can resume and pop them into the bedroom area for reading lights when we go to bed. So it's also really nice to have this area that is open because it's light and airy during the day, but you also have the option of using it for mood lighting in the evenings. Whereas when the bed is higher and you've got an open layout like we do in Mel's van, you don't have that option because you're just going to hit your head on these lights and also your bed is going to be that much higher so you don't have the advantage of this layout quite so much but we're going to talk about that more in a minute let's move on to mel's van and we'll talk about the open layout that he has in his garage area So here we are at the back of Mel's van. Mel is from Big Van Small World. He's my partner in crime. If you don't know him, then check out his channel up here. But most of you watching this video will probably know who he is. So you'll know this garage area very well over the years. But if you don't, you're in for a treat because I'm pretty sure it's going to be quite messy. He's already warned me. <laughs> and there he is then. Right, let's get into Mel's garage area and have a rummage around and see what we can find. <laughs> Let's also make sure that I don't bash my van with Mel's big tire. Oh look and there's Monty. Hello Monty. Are we gonna do it? Oh just about fitted. So as you can see this is an open layout garage area and Mel wanted it so so that he could convert it put in whatever he wanted at any given time so that it wasn't restricted for what he could put in. Also, I just don't think he planned it. I think he just never finished it. Like some of us do, you never finish your camper van. So bless him, he's been looking after me and we've started another van build now. So who knows whether we'll ever finish this off. But so welcome to the back of Mel's van. Now Mel specifically chose an open layout, partly because he wanted to be able to access the doors at the back there. So we have doors from the inside of the van that open up and allow you to lay big pieces of timber or long pieces of equipment all the way from the back of the van right into the living area and right up to the driver's seat if you wanted. And I cannot tell you how many times we have found this useful. So if that's something that interests you and that you think it will be a priority in a enabling you to put something in that's long and you don't want to put it up on the bed area, maybe keep a passageway through clear, the doors at the front there, so that you can have the accessibility. I mean, maybe even you have ski gear and you need the length, something to consider. Because if you block that off, you haven't got that length anymore and you're stuck. So the reason why Mel has got all of these exposed is so that he can quickly glance either the gas, the diesel, the electric or the water. I don't have that option. I decided that I wanted more space for my everyday living and that I categorised the electrics and the water in different areas of the van. I can still access them, I can still check on them, but they're more of a time consuming issue rather than opening up the garage area and being able to see it all at a glance. If that's a concern for you, perhaps you need more of an open layout so you can access all of these at the drop of a hat rather than opening up one hatch to check the electrics and another to crawl under the van to check the water. It does depend on you and what your individual priorities are with the van layout. I do love the way that Mel has got this all open because it means that you can just access everything like I just mentioned but also it's more versatile so if you have something large that you want to throw in the back you can and even if it's something long Mel has countless times needed the cut through with the doors at the front there that go into the living space so that he can run timbers in from the garage area right the way through to the driver's side 
and many things in between that. So if you're doing a van build, for instance, this area has been essential for us to work on our other Vario build that we're currently doing. The other option is obviously that you can pop it all on top of the bed. I don't particularly like that option, but you can do it if you cover it over with a sheet or something, but it's not ideal. So if you want to have long items in the van, this layout is ideal because it gives you that option. A while back, Mel actually bought storage boxes, which we have done a previous video on. So if I can find it, I'll link it up here, where he categorized everything that he wanted in the van, including his scuba gear, his underwater metal detecting kits, his breakdown tools, you name it. It was all in its own box and we cubed it all so that we could get everything that we needed in that one area. And it was leaving this whole middle section free for those boxes. The other items stayed where they were, so the gas, the water, the electric, they all stayed fixed to the sides. And then this main area was all categorised in boxes. And that worked really well. So when you didn't need that particular item, you could just take that box out and the space is the same. That's a really good option if you want that versatility and you don't quite know yet what you want to use your garage area for. A lot of people I've seen have got Murphy beds at one side. So Alex Frude from Mispronounced Adventures, he has a bed that he puts away all the time, which gives him a huge galley kitchen. If you're single and you don't mind making the bed up every night, then that may be an option for you. But there's little storage area like this because of course you still need to have the gangway to get in and out. If I can find a clip of Alex's layout, I will insert it now. Now, the final thing I wanted to talk about was obviously the height difference. So without having that low kitchen area, which I've got in my van, this van obviously means that you can have the bed a lot higher, which means the garage area is a lot bigger. But the only downside is that you haven't got as much headroom so again, work out what works best for you. What do you want to have in the priorities of your van layout? I do, like I said, not like having the bed so far at the back because this mattress literally comes to the back seals of the door. So when it's raining down outside, you've got no protection and that rain just goes straight in. Also, if you'd noticed, because we have cabinets, both sides of the bed area you can't sit sideways under the cabinets so when one of us is up in the bedroom area chilling out and relaxing we're leaning out against these doors we always have a fail safe shout out to each other to make sure that nobody's leaning up against these back doors because as you can imagine if you're sat up here your legs are that way and you've got your back to the doors and somebody suddenly opens one of these, you are very quickly gonna fall out and tumble down onto the floor. And that has nearly happened to me several times. So word of warning, if you've got kids or you're someone that's hard of hearing or a bit clumsy, check with your partner or whoever you're traveling with. If you're solo, it doesn't matter, obviously. But this is a concern because it's quite a long drop. As you can imagine, you're sat in there reading your book or having a cup of tea and suddenly the doors open and you come falling out. Also any pillows or bedding can also come flying out. And also I have to be really careful with Monty that he's not led up against the doors or near the edge. So now we've discussed both an open plan garage area and a built planned garage area. We're gonna jump in the van. I'm gonna talk you through the things that we've learned from having both layouts and talk about all of the new things that we're going to be putting into the Vario and the reasons behind it. Let's jump into the van and we'll talk you through it. So let's start off with drawing the back of the van and I always tend to just do it in a square when I'm using dot graph paper, I always use this for all of my notes because it means that you can make boxes and notes very easily. You can make lines and it's just the way to go in my opinion. So here we have the back of the van. So for starters, we are going to be setting back a portion of the back of the van because Mel wants to put bikes in the front. So first of all, I'm going to write down bikes. 
Now up above in the bedroom area, we're gonna have a open bookshelf, which will mirror over the top of our back shelf. So like in my van that you just seen the kitchen area with that little bit of a backsplash, we are gonna be doing the same in the Vario. So this is gonna be the backsplash. Gonna go all the way across the back. Underneath, the same as in this van with the low camper, the tailgate, we're gonna also be having cupboards all the way across the back and they're gonna be either open drawers like mine or they're just going to be cubby holes. So this is the splashback and that is the worktop with the cupboards below. This is the bookshelf, which is gonna be closed from the back end of the garage. So this will just be a solid bit of timber. But on the other side, it's going to be an open bookshelf so that we can get our books and our bedside items out from when we're in the bedroom area. And this is gonna be curved and connected into the side pillars like so. So it will all be integrated into one lovely opening. So as you can see, it's already taking shape. So it's going to look like a window area. It's all gonna be set back and it's gonna be framed lovely and look all fitted. So these are gonna be open little cubbies, whether or not they have drawers in them, we don't know, but let's for the sake of the video, pretend that they're all little drawers. Sorry about that, I had to move because somebody wants to come out of the barn. So I've had to move the van and I'm currently waiting for them to reverse out. So I thought while I'm sat in the van, I might as well continue to talk to you about the layout of the van. So as we were discussing, this currently is the boxes that are gonna be suspended. So this is still open at the moment. So we haven't blocked it all off yet. And this is inside the bedroom area with the bookshelf up high above us, which is gonna be accessed from inside the bedroom area, not out the back. So as far as we're concerned from the outside, that's just gonna be blocked off. And we're just gonna have these boxes and a little bit of a shelf here where we can put our snacks, where we can put our cups of tea and anything else that we wanna just pop up on the top there from inside the van and outside. It's just a versatile little area there. So these are all gonna have like garage essentials in like toolkit, um, our like coats and shoes and things that we don't need access to all the time and anything else that Mel wants to store in the back there. So then moving on to the lower down area, Sean's off for the day, so he's going. Look, there you go. Bye, Sean. Um, that's why I've had to move because he wanted to get out for the day. So let's just run through the lower area of the garage area now. So there is now going to be another platform across the whole side of the van, and this is going to be a shelf. Now, the reason for this is because below that, there is gonna be one big massive pull out drawer, which is gonna be on high strength drawer runners. And that is gonna have everything of Mel's diving kit or his metal detectors, everything that we need for our underwater investigations. They're all gonna be in that one big drawer. So we can pull that out, have everything in one space. These side areas are going to be open areas so that again we can shove in our camping chairs in one side and Mel's sand scoop, shovel, anything that we need to kind of have breakdown equipment in. It's all going to be on that other side there and then this shelf area this is going to be a full shelf running the whole width of the garage area and on top of this it's going to be just open so that again, we can pop in anything additional. For example, like I've got a SUP board, so I'm gonna put that in there. This isn't to scale, but you know what I mean. They're gonna go in there. That's gonna be breakdown equipment and these are gonna be the camping chairs. So we've got the SUP board up on this shelf here. We're gonna be having a little buggy trailer for Monster. So that's gonna go in the back there and that's in a little bag like so 
and I'm sure there's going to be loads of other things that we haven't even remembered at the moment so they're also going to go on there so I'm going to just put some extra boxes of stuff along that shelf so this drawer will come out and it will also have a lid so essentially it will also be a pull out table for us to be able to sit and enjoy our meals on so that's going to come out from here like so we haven't decided on having an outdoor hose or something for our bikes and our diving equipment yet but we may well put that in as well but that's yet to be decided at the moment lighting is going to be all concealed into the panels and then we're going to have a couple of lights in this lower bookcase area underneath so that's going to be shining down and we're also going to have a skylight up above the bedroom area my drawing is terrible so that's going to be super light in the bedroom area as well so we haven't got to worry too much about that so all of these areas are going to be modular so these can be boxes and large items that we can pull out on that shelf this drawer is going to be pulled out so essentially the only dead spaces or open spaces that aren't going to be particularly planned are going to be these two cubbies here the difference between this van, though, is the inside area. So it's actually going to be divided into two. So this is the garage area access from the back. And then inside the van, we are also going to be adding in some storage. So let me just quickly draw this out for you. So this is inside the van now. So inside the van, when you're standing in the living area and you're looking down towards the bed area, what you'll see is... A side seat which will be lower than the kitchen cabinets and the same on the other side then we're going to have a table in the middle which is going to be a telescopic table which will be height adjustable so we're just going to pop that in there like so and behind that is going to be the bedroom area so that's all going to be fixed and this is going to be slightly raised up off the floor. So we're going to have a little bit of a cupboard under the table. These are our two bench seats. And this is the bed up above here. And this is the kitchen. So you can see where I'm going with this. So underneath the bed, there's going to be three drawers that can be pulled out and accessed. And then this is just going to be the mattress. And the rest I've already explained to you. But looking down from the bedroom area, as if the bed is split in half, we're going to be putting a bulkhead down between the whole garage area. So this is going to be that back storage area, which is the back. And then inside this area, we have got the wheel arches, which we're going to have the seating over the top of. And then in the center, we've got the water tank which is that huge 190 litre water tank. And in front of that, we have just got open storage. So on the top of this open storage are these drawers, which are gonna be up above, but then behind this table as it were, and in this void here is also gonna be things like a laundry chute and just extra storage that we haven't quite figured out yet, but it's gonna be accessible with behind this table see we're going to have this as a big drawer and a big drawer as well so again you just pop the table leg out and you can access those two big drawers there so everything's going to be organized and set out into drawers we're focusing heavily on drawers with this fan build because we've learned that it's much easier to find things for starters. You can organise things better because you can use the whole capacity of a drawer. Whereas in a cupboard, you've got to stack things carefully. Things get lost at the back. It also gets really dirty in a cupboard. Whereas drawers, we find, yes, you might have one area that you need to scoop out, but you can just empty that drawer and clean it and it's a no big, no bigger deal. But um, since Mel fitted the large drawer in the back of this van, he has just been on and on about making it into the Vario for his stuff. 
and replicating that again so he absolutely loves that idea so that's what we're doing in the vario and as you progress in the van build and follow along you'll see a clearer picture of what it is that we want to do so there you have it. There are some options, some ideas for you if you haven't yet planned out your garage area. And better yet, let me know down in the comment section below what you love best about your garage area, how you planned it, and what were the specific things that you were looking for. Also, don't forget, if you haven't checked out Patreon, go check it out down below. It's where I'm posting all of the extra features of this channel and my other channels. So if you don't know anything about it yet, go check it out, it's five pounds a month and it's for all behind the scenes footage. I do a weekly voicemail and also a monthly podcast. I hope to see you over there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll stick around to see the future of the Vario build as it progresses. Until next time guys, breathe in life every day. Namaste. Mm -hmm.